Hello and welcome to episode 47 of the chess.com rapid rating climb series. In this series, I play 15 minute plus 10 second games with the goal of reaching 2000 ELO, but more importantly, to explain my thought process to you guys, the viewers, as I'm playing, to try and give you some tips and advice to help you improve your own game. And then in the post game analysis, using the computer to delve a bit deeper into some of the lines, see where I went right, see where I went wrong, and overall educate myself, and then therefore, being able to educate you better. With that being said, this is potentially the last episode of the series, if we can reach 2000 ELO in this episode. I feel like I've said that so many times at this point, but we'll see if we can make it happen today. I'm excited, I hope you guys are. Let's get into the game. Alrighty, we have the white pieces against K Karo Khan 59. So are we gonna face a Karo Khan? We do, of course we do. And um, there's so many different lines you can play against this. Um, I play the Karakan myself, and I kind of just avoid all of the lines with the white pieces. This is my favorite variation, B3. I don't think we've played against that many Karakans in this rating climb series, to be honest. So this is kind of my recommendation against the Karo. Is it dubious? Absolutely. Absolutely this is dubious. We're just giving up the E4 pawn. And this is very typical against the French defense, and I have a whole playlist of games where I play this against the French. So just imagine this exact position, except the pawn is on c7, and this pawn is on e6. And the point is, after black takes, in the French with this structure, knight c3, knight f6, queen e2, and the pawn falls. Except here, it's different because with these pawns not like this and instead on c6 and e7 after takes knight c3 knight f6 queen e2 black can play bishop to f5 that's not possible if a pawn is on e6 so queen e2 doesn't win the pawn back because of bishop f5 therefore i instead play the move knight g to e2 and the idea is after bishop f5, I have knight g3, attacking the bishop and adding another attacker to the pawn. Bishop g6 is the only move to maintain defense of the pawn and keep the bishop. Although, I say that's the only move, I'm pretty sure the best line in this scenario is to go e6. Because if I take the bishop, you take with the pawn, and it's very difficult for me to win this pawn back. I'm pretty sure that's the best line according to the engine so after he goes bishop g6 i like to throw in the move h4 and just threaten h5 to trap the bishop uh, normally black plays h5 although black could also play h6 and if h6 is played we can push h5 and kick the bishop back to h7 you don't have to but i feel like i want to it could weaken f7 or something with the bishop back there. And now queen e2 is the move I'd like to play to win this pawn back. I don't have to win it back immediately. Um, I don't think black can really defend it anymore now. Because like I say, after bishop f5, knight g3, I believe the move is e6 to defend the bishop rather than dropping the bishop back. e6 is played. Uh, in this position, and okay, I mean bishop here, bishop here, bishop here, none of these are particularly scary. Bishop d6 is maybe scary because he might be threatening to take and ruin our structure a bit. We can absolutely take this pawn, although I feel like I want to castle queenside first. If we castle queenside and I move like queen to d4 to defend this, mm, I don't think I'm concerned because we can just play knight e4 and the queen's under attack and the queen can't take because we'll take back with the knight. So let's castle. Could I have taken e4 immediately? Yeah, absolutely. I guess the only difference that this makes is that I leave the opportunity open for black to play a move like queen d4 and just throw the game away. Uh, by the way, if we win this game, we gain eight elo, which would put us on 2002. And the Racing Climb series would basically be complete. 
uh, because like I said, 2000 ELO is the goal. And I'm trying not to spend ages explaining like every single move really in depth because one, we can do that in the post game analysis. And two, I feel like I covered it pretty well, like the idea of this opening anyway. But I want to win, obviously, right? I really want to win this because I have fumbled 2000 ELO far too many times. Okay, so my opponent goes queen a5, and the idea is that if I take and take and take, then a2 is going to hang. So king b1 looks like a very natural move, just defending a2. This queen could come to um, e5 to defend this pawn, or even b4, but I don't think either of these moves works. I think we can just kick the queen away. So I'm not at all concerned. You could argue that h5 might become weak in certain scenarios. But again, if we lose h5, I don't think I'm that bothered. I also don't think I'm going to lose h5 anyway. Which knight do I want to take with? I think the c knight. I want to take with the c knight to open up this bishop. That's my idea. There's also ideas of um, f4, f5 in a lot of these positions to try and ruin black's pawn structure. Although with the queen on a5, he does defend f5 quite a few times. So that might not be completely valid here. It's just worth like keeping an eye out for. Bishop e7 is a move that I would expect to be played in this position. If bishop e7, what do we want to do? Because if I take, then bishop takes, and I don't want to trade the bishops. So then I'd have to go for a move like d4. Okay, queenside castles. Shouldn't be that surprising, but it is still kind of surprising. Because, I don't know, c6 is a bit is a bit weakening to his king. f4 is a move that I think I want to play anyway, even if I don't play f5. Because after f4, I'd like to put the queen on f3, I think, and then allow this bishop to develop. And we also just control these squares. I don't want anything coming to e5. I could play d4, of course, to control this square, but then my bishop loses its scope. And I'd like to avoid that if possible. Bishop a3, by the way, challenging my bishop. I can always meet with bishop to a1 to keep the bishops on the board. I can take, but I'd rather not in many of these cases. So let's go f4. This is a move. Something like knight d5 attacking the pawn. And if I go for like queen f3, bishop d6 isn't playable because we control this square. So this pawn should be fine. If we have a big trade here, I feel like it only benefits me. Because I then have the bishop pair. My bishop is very nice. And I have the only light squared bishop in the position. Then we could maybe try and go for something like bishop d3 or like g4 bishop h3. And make moves like f5 happen potentially. It's just a very complicated and dynamic position that you can get from this b3 setup. And like I said, it is better against the French, and you can check the playlist on my channel, um, which has those in it. Uh, it's like games in the b3 French, something like that, because I would recommend it against the French, but I also think it's viable against the Karo. As we're seeing, it's a very complicated and interesting game. It's not... I mean, it's kind of similar to a normal Karo can structure from the black side. You know, h6, bishop h7, pawns on e6 and c6, knights on d7 and f6. But normally, black castle's king side. Also, the queen rarely comes out to a5. But on our side of the board, things are very strange. Like, this is not a normal Cairo Khan setup from us whatsoever. So he takes. 
interesting. Does he want to do queen to f4? Is that his idea? Because if we move the knight, then he takes on c2. But if queen f4, we can just go d3. Defending the knight, cutting off this diagonal, and then moves like g4 look quite tasty to me. To attack the queen, expand on the queen side, maybe play g5, maybe play f5. Also get this bishop out on the g2 square or the h3 square. This is also very nice. It makes him dif it difficult for black to develop his bishop because g7 can hang in a lot of scenarios because there's now no longer a knight on f6. I'm not sure whether taking was the right idea. If he goes queen d5... I think d3 again. I think d3 defending the knight. Because I don't really want to bring my bishop out this way anyway. Because you could argue that d3 blocks my bishop's development. But I think I want to push this pawn and bring the bishop out this direction. And if uh, something like queen d5, d3, let's just say king b8, g4. I don't know. It's difficult for black to move to be fair. But I've got ideas of bishop to g2 lining up the queen with the bishop and some discoveries like knight f6. Uh, so, you know, that would be very nice. So I'm not worried about queen f4 or queen, sorry, queen f5 or queen d5. For those reasons, I just play d3. And I don't think taking the knight with the bishop is a good idea. I really don't. <laughs> he could... Like, take, take, and go knight f6, but I don't think that's any good. Okay, d3. We're going to lose f4. Is that a problem? I don't know. Can we defend both? I don't think so. I'm not going to lie, I kind of missed that f4 was hanging. Hmm... I don't think that's too big of an issue though. D3, Queen F4. There are ideas of like Rook H4, Rook A4. Here, here. You could just play G3. And then get the Bishop out. And we still have massive pressure. And to be honest, we're going to bring a Rook to the F file. And that just looks bad for him. Honestly, that just looks bad. Because it's so hard for him to develop his dark squared bishop. Because our bishop's staring at g7. Which, if we win g7, we're probably also going to win h6. And uh, then this pawn becomes a big problem for black. And if he takes the f4 pawn, then we're going to open up the f file. Well, he's opened it up for us. Okay, g3 looks like a good move. He can't take because we take. G3, his queen is like kind of running out of squares. She can go back to F5 or she'd have to retreat to like C7. Neither of those look appetizing. I don't think we're missing anything here. We're also playing quite quickly. We are up on the clock. That is a very rare sight on this channel. For those of you who've been around for a while, you know I am never ever up on the clock. And I hope that I'm still explaining things in good enough detail for you guys. Um, if if I should be taking more time to explain my moves, please just let me know in the comments. Like, the goal of this channel is not for me to get to 2000 ELO. Like, in this series, as I've said numerous times, the point is to try and educate you guys to help you get better at chess and improve your chess. That's the point. So, if I need to slow down a bit and explain my thought process a bit better, Please just, just help me. I I don't care like if I need to improve on things. Anything with the channel. If it needs improving on, just tell me. Like I'm just trying to provide as much value as I possibly can to you guys. So you know better than me what you want. So just let me know, please. And if things are going well 
and uh, for some reason everything is absolutely perfect, then great. But there's, you know, that's obviously not the case, is it? There's always things to improve on. Anyway, queen to c7. As anticipated. And okay, what are we going to do? Bishop g2 looks good, supporting the knight. Controlling f6 very nicely, so I'm a big fan of that. Bishop to h3, I think I prefer... Do I prefer that? To put pressure on e6, so after like rook f1, if f7 falls, then e6 is weak. And it makes it difficult to play a move like f6, because then h... Sorry, then e6 will fall. If we go bishop h3 and he tries to play a move like bishop to f5, we can always play g4 as well. And if the bishop retreats, then we have moves like g5 potentially. So I like that move. Have I calculated it perfectly? No. He can take my knight and go for my pawn. But I feel like that's incredibly risky. Just ridiculously risky. He goes up two pawns, but like... We can take back with the pawn, and if queen g3... Do we have any tactics with the open d file? I don't think so. But we could play a move like rook d3. Kick the queen to, let's just say, back to c7. And then, like, rook d1. And it's very difficult for black to move. Because we have so much pressure down the d-file. Okay, he doesn't take. He doesn't do like this, which is probably smart. Rook g8, though. Okay, so I guess his point is he wants to develop this bishop. Um, it's easier to develop the bishop. Um, if... G7 is defended, right? To be fair, where's the bishop going? Like, these squares aren't even doing that much. We could go rook hf1. But then if takes, 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 then our bishop's under attack. So we can't take here. By the way, if this knight moves, there could be ideas of doing something like this. If, like, this bishop trades itself off, for example. Just worth bearing in mind. So I don't really want to move this rook because I want to keep this rook, uh, sorry, the bishop defended if we go for some exchanges. So rook df1, although it looks like counterintuitive because a rook on d1 should be better than a rook on h1, how does he defend this? How does he do that? Um. Knight b6, opening up the queen's defense. Is that really viable? Rook f1, knight b6. Okay, what do we have? Hmm... Can I actually exploit that? There are some ideas of like taking and then queen takes and then like bishop e6, but that doesn't work right now. So rook f1, knight b6. I feel like the knight's out the game on b6. It can come to d5, but I don't think that really matters. So I feel like I should play that without too much thought. So it just looks like the most obvious move. Is he... Does he want to play f5? Could f5 be his idea? Could, you know. Rook df1, f5. Now f6 obviously doesn't work, so we just take on e6. But f5 also attacks our knight. He does block his bishop out of the game, though. 
Um, if we go back to C3, there's no real way back into the game because these squares are all covered. So rook f1, f5, knight d2. We can come back in via c4. Rook f1, f5, knight d2. He can take on g3. But then we can take on e6 with a good amount of pressure. So let's go rook df1. Let's do it. I feel like this is logical. This rook could end up being a liability as well if tactics on e6 happen at some point. So let's see, let's see, let's see. We are still ahead on time, so shocker, uh, I know. But our opponent is playing this quite well. He's making this difficult. Definitely making this difficult. By the way, if knight b6 and... Well, if knight b6 happens, e5 is going to lose a defender. So moves like bishop e5 are going to become potentially possible in some positions to attack the queen and also potentially cut off the king, making moves like king b8 a bit more risky. Okay, so he takes. Does... Well, we could take with the pawn, but I don't see the point. I think taking with the queen makes the most sense. Is he really going to take this? Is he really going to take that? Can we just take on f7? Everything's defended. The queen defends the rook. The rook defends the bishop. Queen g3, rook f7, e6 is under attack. These moves are going to become impossible because of rook d7, rook d7, and bishop e5 check. Like I said, that's always an idea um, in these positions. So that is a potential line. He doesn't have to take on g3. But like I said, here, here. How do you defend e6? If you push e5, then I can just take. Because the knight doesn't defend it, because the knight's pinned to the king. And our bishop pair could come in absolute clutch there. The thing is, we're down a pawn, right? But our bishops are so strong... Our queen is in the center of the board controlling so many different squares. You know, there's ideas of queen to h7 potentially attacking this rook in some situations. By the way, I'm going to grab a jumper real quick. Or like a hoodie. Because um, the UK weather has taken a turn for the worst. And it's just gotten kind of cold recently. Knight f6... Knight f6, okay. So we can take this with the bishop and then do this. But that looks no good to me. Wait, if we take and then takes, bishop e6 takes, takes, and we win the rook. But if bishop takes, takes, and bishop here, he doesn't have to, he doesn't have to um, take the bishop. He can just move his king. And then we're just down, uh, well then g3 is going to fall. I feel like there's something here though. What if we start by taking? If we take and he moves, can we take with like the rook? Does that change anything? I don't think so. Um, take, take, take. Like I said, if he takes and takes, we win the rook, but he doesn't have to do that. Here. Here, 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 
This doesn't work because it's defended anyway. Um, f7 isn't even hanging because the queen controls that square. And after we move, he's just going to take this. And... Well, then maybe we have this. But he doesn't have to take anyway. We're just going to be down in exchange. So, okay. Uh, this is a nice move, potentially. Targeting a7, defending g3, keeping an eye on e6 for sacrifices. We're also still supporting the bishop e5 move if we want it. Are we vulnerable to this? Yeah. But I don't think that's a concern. Uh, he could take on h5 if we go to e3. But then we can take this. And I think he has too many problems. Because f7 also is attacked by the rook. So queen e3. Uh, we also stop the bishop from coming to c5. But that's not that big a deal. The other candidate move is queen f3. Just defending and defending. But I feel like the queen on e3 does more. Do we have a threat? Um, yeah, I think this is a threat in that position, because our queen isn't under attack. So let's go to e3. We still have an absolute ton of pressure in the position. Uh, bishop e5 ideas still exist, potentially, although bishop d6 will counter the vast majority of them, of course. But if anything happens to that bishop, then you know. And we are attacking a7, so if he plays a move like king b8, then he is vulnerable to these ideas. Potentially. Potentially. King b8 also stops bishop e6, because that won't come with check. So I think this is the most logical move. King b8. We could consider bishop d4. Attacking there, but... Uh, it feels just like a one-move threat. It doesn't really improve our position at all, playing bishop to d4. Remember, if you're going to make a threat, only make it if it improves your position, or the threat can't be stopped, or if the only way to stop the threat is going to worsen your opponent's position. Don't just make a threat for the sake of making a threat. That's what bishop d4 would be. So, okay. King b8, I think he's going to play. I'm tempted to play g4 and look for g5. I don't even know if that's that good, though. If king b8, we could... Hmm. What could we do? I think g4, g5 makes the most sense. Trying to cause some problems in the black position. And I guess we kind of toss the ball back into black's court. Whoa, so he's willing to give this up. And the bishop e6 idea is no longer work because this rook is defended very well. So can we just take? If he takes, check queen back what if we play this okay then bishop d6 take it's a risk to take but no i don't think that helps hmm Is this still worth doing? I don't think so. Okay, queen a7. This looks like the most logical move there. Um, we don't have to deliver the check though. We don't have to deliver the check.
Hmm. The move I want to play is bishop e5, because that would be kind of game over uh, if the queen's on g3, but I don't see how we make that happen. Here, here. If we come back trying to support this, then he can just go queen c7. Uh, so that doesn't work. Here, here. We could play rook e1. So then if here, here, then we have bishop e5. But I want the rook on the f-file. Pressuring f7, stopping this knight from moving. I think rook f3 maybe. I'm going to go rook f3. The idea is to keep the rook on the f-file, but defend the g3 pawn. So this is more of a threat. Again, if knight h5, we can just take on f7. e6 is also hanging. The knight will be discovered against. That's probably not good for him. And our rook is nice and safe on the f3 square, because he's got no light squared bishop. If knight d5, then we just take, and we have a lot of threats, I feel like. And against e6. Okay, we're getting low on time, but we are well we are a pawn down. We are a pawn down. But it's difficult for him. King b8 has to be the move. Is he worried about this? Well I don't want to take here because then g3 is gonna become under fire. So King b8 seems logical. Um What are we going to do against that? Well, we could go g4. b6. Really? Really? It just looks like he's weakening things for no reason. Hmm. I want to play rook e1. And I'll tell you why. It's because I think I'm going to have tactics like this. And exploiting the bishop. And potentially his rook. Let's say he does nothing. Takes, takes, takes. Rook d7 defending the bishop. Then we can play this and remove the defender of the rook. If he goes here. Um, I don't think bishop e6 works there. But we can just play a move like, I don't know, queen f2. Just to go after this. Or maybe queen e2. To keep an eye on this. Uh, if bishop c5 we just go d4. And where's that bishop going? It goes to d6. This is well defended anyway. Okay king b7. Makes sense. Now maybe we transfer the bishop to this diagonal. Hmm. This is tempting. Here, here. Hmm. Should we go g4? Hmm, I don't see the point in it. Maybe bishop g2, because this isn't a target anymore. Yeah, I, it, it can't be bad to line the bishop up with a weak pawn and a weak king, right? 
a4, a5 is tempting though. So look here. Again, if bishop c5, I think we just push d4. g3 is well protected. He can't really take this because then we win f7. And e6 becomes weak. And g7 becomes weak. And the bishop's weak. And the queen's weak. And the king's weak. He can't do that. I mean, if, if he, he can if he's attacking my queen. But queen e2. Or queen f2. Is there a better square? I think queen f2. I want to just play quickly. Again, this, this. We're also doubling up on the f file. He might have to drop back. Oh, he wants to put the bishop there. Okay. Hmm. What about d4? I don't want to trade bishops. I want to go c4. To reopen this diagonal. And boot the knight away. This is getting tense. Getting very tense. But I think we have a ton of pressure. Yes, we're down a pawn. But we have the double bishops, which is very strong. The black position looks like it's on a knife's edge. Whoa. Can we not just do this anyway? Because if we take take, you're opening up the B file for me. Really? Really, really? This is well defended. If you put the knight there, you're not threatening this. I think I can just go a3. Or we can just go here. If you go there, can I just do this? We are stepping off the F file, but I think this is good. That looks weak. Okay, is C5 any good? And then the knight goes back there and blocks our bishop, so I don't want to do that. Hmm. How do we defend this? Queen here, but then this falls. Could go rook c1. Rook c1, bishop here, rook c2. And moves like d5 are on the cards. To blow everything open. Okay. That looks odd. Maybe it's good. Bishop a1. Kind of just saying, what's your knight doing there? It's a bit silly. And we maintain the defense. G3 is well guarded still. Um, maybe we want to move our bishop to h3 to support d5 with this. Ooh. E5, C5. What about if we give this check, though? You can't step onto the B file, so you've got a block. Got a block. If you block, I think we can take. Because Bishop takes. And the F file opens. That can be good for us. don't have to take though, we could do this. Hmm. Let's take, we also open this up. He can't block our bishop off, so there's no rush to take it. King d8, then we can take, but... Can I do this? Or this?
I know I feel like I'm playing a bit risky right now, but f5 can't be played. We're controlling the b file, we're controlling the d file, we've got this. Okay, now we should take. Oh, maybe we didn't need to, maybe we could have taken there. Maybe that was rushed. Hmm. I, he doesn't have this check, so queen controls that. I didn't want to move this rook because then queen b7. I don't know how he defends the bishop. Our king isn't all that safe though, and I've got low time, so this isn't an easy conversion. If he goes here, take, then the knight's going to fall. Uh, I don't know how he defends the bishop. Also, his king is in dire straits. Our queen's doing a great job, you know. Controlling some important checking square. God, this is an incredibly interesting game. If we win this and get 2,000 elo from this, this will be one of the absolute bangers. This is a move, but then here... Should I just take with the rook? Give a check. He's running out of squares. That check. Just defending the bishop. Drop a ton of material, but you know. That's mate. Let's go. We've done it. We've done it, 2000 ELO, and what a game to do it in. I'm, I'm genuinely kind of shaken, I don't know if you can see this. My hands are actually kind of shaken. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to take a quick break um, before we go over the analysis. That was nerve-wracking, honestly, because I knew I was winning, but like my opponent just kept fighting and fighting, and I was like, bro, bro stop, please, I've got no time, chill. But yeah, I hope that was as satisfying for you guys as it was for me. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Let's get into the game analysis. What a game. Alright, so I just went and had a quick break, uh, but I'm back now, re-energized and less shaky. So let's get into the game analysis. I'm genuinely pumped after that. That was an incredible game. Um, we have E4, we have C6, and like I said... D4 is the main move, of course. You can go like knight c3, you can go knight to f3. Mm, those are the main moves. But we go for b3. And I've been over a bunch of the other lines in different videos. So like I say, check out the Kara Khan playlist on my channel if you're interested. Uh, that's obviously me playing the Kara Khan. But um, same concept, right? And um, yeah, after b3, we have d5. And I go bishop to b2. Now, the best move is e5 here. And you do still get an interesting position. Like, it's still a completely playable position for white, to be fair. Um, but I don't know, it's just not that exciting, in my opinion. Like, this is just a normal Karo Khan, except you've got a bishop on b2, right? Because the e-pawn is cutting off of a lot of the attacking lines that you want to use as the white pieces. Um, if I was in a classical game, I probably wouldn't play the bishop b2 Karo Khan. I might play, I don't know, something like the exchange, because I know this quite well for the white side. I know a lot of the plans and whatnot. So I might do this. Uh, there's a lot of ways black can go wrong as well. But even in rapid, I think this is a great variation. Takes knight c3. Uh, apparently knight e2 first is better, but I think it's basically the same. Because all these moves are still going to happen. And yeah, 
So I'm correcting saying that e6 is the best move here. Uh, and the point is, if you take the bishop, then e f5, and uh, you're never winning this pawn. Like, you're never winning it. And black's just going to set up something like g6, bishop g7 castles, and have an incredibly solid structure, and possibly play h5 as well to stop any pawn advances. So, if um, e6 is played, you can continue with, like, queen e2 and go after this pawn. You can probably just win it like we did in the game, to be fair. Something like castle, castle, knight takes. And you're fine. Absolutely fine. Black is a bit better, apparently. But I think these positions are absolutely fascinating, which we had in the game, right? Um, even if the computer doesn't fully approve of them. My opponent goes bishop g6, though. We start with h4 to take some space. And if black plays a lazy move, then h5. And black's under a bit of danger. He can go bishop f5 to keep his bishop defended. But moves like h6 are a problem. Because we're going to weaken the dark squares. And the rook and knight could become exposed by my long range bishop. There's a lot of ways for black to go wrong here. So he goes bishop g6, h4, h6. He can play h5. Um, just to stop me from going h5. But we continue with the plan. We win the e4 pawn. And maybe we then argue that the h5 pawn is a weakness. So he instead goes h6. We push h5. We don't have to, but I choose to. Just to grab some more space. Um, and we're also making it difficult for him to play g6 himself if he decides to. Queen e2. e6. We castle queenside. We can take the pawn, but like I said, we can take it at any time, really. If the queen comes to d4 to try and defend, this is a... I mean, it's not a problem, but like, you know, it's not great. Although there is the move, bishop a3, and you can't take because of mate. That's hilarious. So you have to play c3, and then takes, takes, queen retreats. White loses a dark squared bishop, but so does black, so it's not the end of the world, right? Um... If bishop h3 isn't played, though, then the position is like plus one. Uh, because you just double these pawns. And this is a considerable weakness. Especially if f4, f5 happens as well. Or, I mean, you don't have to do f4, f5, obviously. But the position is just good for white. I think we can all see that. So, yeah, after castles, he goes queen a5. A4 is a bit more accurate, but I was worried about B5 things happening, especially with what happened a few episodes ago where we played against a cheetah and B5 just came out of absolutely nowhere and completely crushed my position uh, by some really weird computer line, which I did see in the game, but you wouldn't play, like you wouldn't consider B5 because you wouldn't then calculate miles ahead to see the computer line. Anyway, check out that video if you're interested. It's like, it's called something like Cheetahs Ruining Chess or something like that. Um, but yeah, we go King B1 to defend. And I also like King B1 because then Bishop A3 doesn't pin the Bishop to the King. Of course, A4 you get the same thing because the Bishop's not protected by the Queen. But it just seems like a bit of an overextension. Um, so King B1, Knight BD7, and we take. He castles. Queen f3 is the best move here, which I did consider. Uh, in this position, I played f4 with the intention with the intention of then going queen f3. But the point is that I can get my bishop out, right? I can maybe play a move like bishop d3 to challenge his bishop. But okay, we went f4 first, which is an inaccuracy, but I don't think it's that big a deal. And he takes us, which just seemed a little bit odd. We took back, and yeah, I did see this move, queen f5. Oh, wow, bishop g7. <laughs> and you can't do this because, whoops, the bishop just got deflected. And if you don't take and play rook g8, bishop f8, you can't take it like this because of knight d6. You could take it like this, though. And then d3, and then it's slightly better for black. 
Because, I mean, this rook is nice and active anyway. The bishop's active, this rook's active, and my dart squares are weak. So bishop g7 is fancy, but I honestly don't think it's the best move. I kind of disagree with the computer, um, because I think it's on a low depth, right? But we go d3, which is really the only good move um, to defend. Queen f4, g3, we kick the queen out. And like I said, there's nowhere, there's not many places for the queen to go. If the queen goes to like f5, okay, we do have this idea again, which let's be honest, I wasn't going to see if I'm totally real with you. But bishop h3, I would have seen. Uh, queen a5, that's the second best move. Something like rook f1, uh, or uh, maybe the other rook. Queen f2 was apparently good which is what we played later in the game. But this position is very comfortable for white. We have two very strong bishops. His pieces aren't developed all that well. We're down a, pe we're down a pawn, but I think this is more than sufficient compensation. Um, but yeah, he retreats to c7. We go bishop to h3, rook g8, which was an odd move. I mean, I understand it to defend this, but I thought king b8 was the natural move. Well, this was by far the natural move. And it's kind of difficult to come up with a plan here. If you go like something like rook hf1, f5, this is what I was calculating during the game. Knight d2. You can take on g3, though. So, okay, what about this rook moving over? f5, knight d2. If queen takes g3, then I had queen takes e6. That was my idea. Uh, because the bishop is defended. He doesn't have to take here though. He can go bishop d6. But knight c4 maybe. I thought this was decent for the white pieces. We have a lot of pressure going on in the position. And if, G, if g3 falls. It's not the end of the world. Because e6 is going to fall. And the g file opens up. Which is probably beneficial to us. So that was my idea on king b8. He instead chose rook g8. Which was a little bit odd. We go rook df1. I don't know why it's calling that an inaccuracy, because it isn't an inaccuracy. Uh, and bishop takes e4 is the best move for black. Again, if f5 is played, knight d2. If you decide to take on g3. Knight c4. Hmm? Really? I thought I'd just take on e6. Attack the rook, pin the knight. Yeah, bishop c5, bishop f5. We're now equal on material. And if we trade like this, with something like rook gf8, and go back to e6. This is just a nice position for white. We're equal material, but black's kingside pawns are quite weak. Black's king is also weaker than my king. My bishop's, I would argue, better than his bishop. And if my knight comes back into e4 or c4, it's going to be very active. And the only move to not lose is queen g2 here, which is interesting. But Okay, he takes on e4, which is the best move. We take back, and he goes knight f6, which is again the best move. If he takes on g3, then I win f7, and the game is over, apparently. It's just completely over, like... I just have way too much pressure going on in the position. Best line is knight c5, bishop e6. And if we trade like this and here, then we have this, bishop d6, and we win the queen. Bishop e7, sorry, queen e7 was apparently winning the game in this position because you can't take because there's a pin. And if you take here, then you just get mated, which is nice. But basically, he again finds the best move with knight to f6. Every other move is losing because you need to defend f7. Now, knight b6 I was calculating, but again, rook f7. And I know I mentioned that some of these ideas were possible uh, with a fork on e6. So he blocks off the f file and he attacks my queen. Taking with the bishop is apparently the best move, but I didn't want to do this. Now, bishop e6 is a move. Of course, if you take, then queen takes. But just king b8. I can't take this, so I just have to retreat the bishop. g4 is the best. And if this. 
Bishop d1, I mean, okay, who's playing that? Come on, let's be real. Um, so yeah, taking is fine, and yeah, bishop e6 isn't the best, apparently rook f6 is, but I didn't like the fact that he could get into my position like this. Oh, again, we do have rook f7 with this whole bishop e6 thing, so king b8 is the only good move. Rook hf1, eh, I, I suppose this is playable for white. But I thought I could do better. I didn't want to trade off my dark squared bishop and leave him with a dark squared bishop. Because, like, look at my king side. There's just dark squared holes absolutely everywhere. This looks really scary. Or bishop a3 ideas. I didn't want to get mated, you know. So, I instead went for queen e3. Which, okay, is the second best move, I think. Queen e2 is apparently good. But I chose queen e3 because I thought it provided more attacking opportunities and kept an eye on e6. Bishop b7 is a mistake. Yeah, I expected king b8, which is the best move. Um, what was my plan here? I don't remember, but rook f3 is the best move, which is kind of what I went for in the game, right? Um, he goes bishop e7, though. And funnily enough, queen a7 is the best move. And after queen g3, like giving this check is bad. I, I, I established that right. So I knew I didn't have to give the check. But like this is the best move in the position. I understand a4 going for this, but it's also a really slow plan. So I thought that I didn't want to give up my g pawn for the a pawn because I've got no attack anyway. I guess you can argue it weakens the king for the future, but yeah, instead I go rook f3, which I think is good because now I am threatening to take this. He goes b6, which again is just like, why won't you play this? I think he's scared of these ideas, but they don't work because of bishop 2 d6. Maybe he didn't want to do this, but this is just good for black. Like, he's still up a pawn. If I try to be greedy and like take on h6, then my light squares are just getting absolutely destroyed. Um, sorry, my dark squares are getting destroyed. So I don't want to trade off my dark squared bishop. He goes b6 though, which is odd. I go rook e1, which is a slight inaccuracy. But again, I my idea was, let's say, I don't know, a move like b5 is played. Then I have bishop e6. And if you move the king, I'm going to take on f7. And your bishop and rook are under attack. So you have to take this. And then queen e6. I'm attacking the king, I'm attacking the rook, I'm attacking the bishop. If you block with the rook to give the bishop defense, then I take this knight and then I take this rook. Like this, for example. So you can't play rook d7. If you move the king, then I can just take on e7. And I emerge a pawn up with a far better position. Because I just have so much pressure. The knight's under attack. If I move like knight takes h5 is played. You're just getting mated anyway. So moving the king isn't good enough. Queen d7. Again I just take here. And it's still pretty bad. So that was my idea with rook to e1 and the point was to add an extra attacker to the bishop once i sack my bishop but king b7 steps out of that g4 is actually the best mm. okay g4 is a good move rook ef1 is also a good move but it's also difficult to play rook ef1 because i just committed the rook to the e file it's difficult for humans to play those kind of moves and like admit that they put the rook on the wrong square and have basically wasted a move but you can also argue there's no rush in this position. I, however, chose to play bishop to g2. Because I thought it can never be a bad thing to line the king and the bishop up. And also c6 can become weak in the future, right? Knight d5 is played. I go back to f2. Um, again, I want to keep an eye on d4 so I can play it if I need to. I also want to look at this. 
and just make sure my queen's applying some pressure so a4 a5 could be nice in the future. Bishop f6 is played. c4 is apparently the best move here. And if you move the move the knight, let's say, then d4. But I wasn't sure if this was good for me. Ah, then I can take on f7. I missed this. I missed this. So I instead went d4 just to block off the file. Sorry, block off the diagonal because I don't want to trade. And I want to play c4 once um, I ensure my bishop doesn't get traded off. b5 though, like, that was clearly a bad move. I don't know what it was because, like, yeah, it looks like it's trying to prevent c4, but it just makes c4 more powerful. Um, better in this position is a move like... Knight e7? That's tough to play. Rook d6 is a weird move to play. Rook gf8 makes a bit more sense. So, rook d6 and knight e7 I think are very tough moves to play. Rook gf8. I still go c4. Let's say knight e7. There's no knockout blow. Or anything like that. Um, it's a better position for me, no doubt. But... The game goes on. The game goes on. Anyway, he cho he chooses b5, and the problem is that c4 is now a killer. Because if you move this knight, then I'm going to take, and you can't take back because this discovery is on your king. So you have to take. I take back. And knight e7 is not as good because of rook b3 check, which is why knight b6 is a bit better, so that you cover the b file. Um, he plays king c8, and the thing is, king a8 is apparently the best move, right? But you're just removing another defender from c6, and my bishops are lined up with you forever, and you can't really step onto the b-file either, so it's very tough to play a move like that. I do understand why he goes king c8, because c5 is a threat to win your knight. It's very tough. You, you have to choose between these moves, essentially. And if king a8, apparently it's a slight advantage for white. But with such low time on the clock, I have full um, confidence that I would have caused problems here. Would I have converted it? I don't know. Would I have got a winning position? I think so. But I might not have capitalized on it. The problem is my bishop's amazing. Like, it just is. And it's kind of difficult to defend. If I play like queen f3 to try and attack this, something like rook c8, is the only move because rook d6 rook d6 runs into c5 and okay i mean like i said there is no immediate breakthrough but the position is clearly better for white you know that's undoubtable undeniable so king c8 is chosen and i go rook c1 which isn't the best move but it's a good move c5 is apparently good but i thought this was just blocking everything up and queen f1 and king and queen e2 are the only good moves trying to get into a6 uh, and then if uh, a move like king d8 is played then i have rook to b7 winning the queen but if i don't find one of these moves it's completely drawn so i thought rook c1 was a far more practical option because i keep the tension in the position and I'm just lining my rook up with the queen and king, because d5 can become a problem in the future. He goes knight a4. Again, the only move to keep my advantage is to go bishop to a1. And maintain defense of d4, because d4 is under a lot of pressure. And be like, yo, what's your knight doing? It's useless. And then e5. And e5, it's just a bad move. Maybe it's a bit of a panicky move. But let's imagine I take. If you take back... I mean, the problem is I always have bishop h3. Which is... It must be what he missed. Bishop h3 just really shows how weak this king is. Because it can't go to the b-file. And the rook needs to block. I play it immediately. Which is apparently slightly more accurate. Rook d7 is played. 
we take on e5. He takes back. I go rook d1. Uh, I did have queen f7 here because obviously the rook's pinned. Um, why did I not do that? I think because of rook d8. Rook d1 is best. Yeah, maybe I should have gone for this. But I felt like it's just tough to like have some of your most valuable pieces undefended and being stared at. Obviously, you know that the rook is pinned. But it just looks a little bit flimsy. So I decided to play rook d1. Because I'm like, right, okay, I know this is fine. I know we can't block my bishop. Except for bishop d6. But then my rook's no longer under attack. Um, bishop e5 is the best here. And if you take, then take. You either take or you go king d8. And then you're just completely losing, apparently. I mean, obviously you're completely losing. But this is the best way. I decide instead just to take. And go bishop to e5. And go, look, you can't defend. He goes knight b6. We take. Queen e7. Rook c6. I'm just trying to play tempo winning moves. Queen d4. I didn't play queen d4 because it's the best move. I played queen d4 because I wanted to give a check. And I wanted to defend my bishop. Just so I don't blunder anything. Obviously, I'm also getting the queen into the attack. But I played it because it was safe. It's just a safe move. And um, if a move like king to e8 is played, I was considering sacking my rook to go for moves like rook to c8. Because I'm up so much material, it doesn't matter at this point. I just need to play aggressive moves to win me the game, essentially. I mean, obviously, play aggressive moves to win me the game. But it doesn't matter if I throw a bit of material at him, right? Because his king's so exposed. And after takes, this would have been checkmate. Well, this would have been checkmate. But this would have also been checkmate. And so would this. But, okay, he goes knight d7 to block the check. Rook b8 is mate because the knight is pinned and the king has no escape. And that's 2000 elo. We've done it, guys. Please let me know in the comments what you want me to do next. Because I don't... I don't know if I can feasibly try and push this higher while maintaining the level of analysis and explanation that I am. I'm leaning more towards starting the series again from around the 1200-ish range based on a poll that I had on my channel trying to figure out what sort of strength my viewers are. So that's what I'm leaning towards. Let me know if that's a terrible idea. Let me know if you would like that. And thank you very much for watching to the end of the video if you've made it. I really appreciate you and I'll see you in the next video.